In this mind map, we're going to look at the effects that neoplasms can have on the hosts. And we'll be looking at, of course, both benign as well as malignant neoplasms, because both of these types of tumours can exert clinical effects. So the first thing that we're going to do is to divide them into local effects. These are caused by the physical growth of the tumours themselves versus the systemic effects, which can be caused, for example, by hormones that are elaborated by the tumour. So the first effect that we're going to look at is local compression. Take, for example, a pituitary adenoma, which is actually a benign tumour. Here is an example. This is the tumour and it is actually compressing upon the optic chiasm here. So the patients can present very interestingly with visual field effects due to compression on this adjacent structure. Sometimes the tumour uh, can expand so much so that it actually compresses on the other non-neoplastic aspects of the pituitary gland, giving rise to decreased hormone production. So this is a good example of the locally compressive effects that a tumour can exert. The next local effect that we're going to look at would be something that occurs in tubular structures, for example in the gut, and this would be obstruction. So here we have a picture of the esophagus, and um, this, as you can see, is quite a narrow tube already to begin with. There is a tumour here, this is a squamous cell carcinoma that is growing into the lumen and compressing it to this small slit-like space. So if you think about the patient, uh, this patient is likely to present with difficulty swallowing or dysphagia. So this is one of the obstructive effects of the tumour. In addition, tumours can also give rise to ulceration and bleeding, and these are often tumours that arise in mucosal line surfaces. Uh, once they invade into the underlying stroma, they can sometimes um, invade into vessels as well. And this can occur in the GI tract. Um, some tumours can present with bleeding. Tumours can also perforate, and again, this uh, occurs in hollow organs, such as the gastrointestinal tract. In addition, Tumours can give rise to physical effects of twisting and torsion. This occurs in organs such as the ovary or the testis, and when there is torsion, there is cutting off of the blood supply, and this can give rise to hemorrhagic necrosis. In addition, uh, tumours can sometimes just simply overrun and destroy the existing normal tissue. For example, bone marrow involved by leukaemia, it can disrupt the hematopoietic cells and give rise to dysfunction, or even if there is extensive metastasis involving the bone marrow. Now let's move on to systemic effects of tumours, and these are most often seen in endocrine tumours. Um, again, we'll take the pituitary adenoma as an example. This can be a functional tumour, for example, there can be a prolactin-producing pituitary adenoma, which can give rise to lactational change in a non-breastfeeding uh, adult female. Paraneoplastic syndromes occur when tumours produce hormones or substances that the cells normally do not produce. A good example would be squamous cell carcinoma in the lung. This can sometimes produce parathyroid-related protein, which can give rise to abnormalities in calcium metabolism. Cancer cachexia is a phenomenon in which uh, patients who are suffering from cancer, often advanced disease, um, have marked reduction in body fat as well as marked reduction in lean body mass. This is usually very obvious when you see the patient. The patient is extremely thin. And these effects are often mediated by uh, systemic substances, including tumor necrosis factor alpha, as well as interleukin-1, which if you recall are cytokines. So finally, one of the indirect effects that uh, tumours, particularly malignant tumours, can have on the hosts would be the effects of treatment for cancer. Patients are often treated with highly toxic drugs, which can hit the bone marrow hard because it not only kills cancer cells, it also kills the rapidly regenerating cells of the bone marrow, giving rise to marked uh, immunosuppression, um, ready bruising, etc. So some of the effects need not necessarily be directly from cancer, but due to treatment. So just to summarize, we've looked at uh, the effects of both benign and malignant tumors on the host, which include local effects. These are from physical growth of the tumor and systemic effects often due to elaboration of hormones or cytokines.